Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, so this week I want to talk about some interesting things that have been happening um, that I saw on social media. This week there were some organizers that um, participated in some pro LGBTQA um, plus um, events on like BYU campus. Um, some people were like wearing like rainbow colors or like whatever rainbow memorabilia, whatever they had or pride memorabilia they had. And then ultimately it led to, um, they organized where they lit the Y like rainbow colored. Um, so it just made me like really think about this week about like where are we as a church and like even like culturally where are we as a church and membership um, with like the gay community because I definitely feel like it's been something like the one thing that's been kind of on my mind for years honestly like for years ever since the biggest was like in 2008 when Prop 8 was happening in California and the church was participating in that and a lot of members were participating in that um, so I want to kind of go around and talk about like I kind of talk about kind of what I've seen my experiences and also kind of what I've heard and just kind of my thoughts on this hopefully this is a positive thing because I think this is a touchy subject and there's a lot of emotions on both sides so hopefully it's a good thing growing up in the church um, one of the main you know doctrines of the church is you know uh, is family we get taught that you know we are gonna get sealed with our families we that uh, in the pre-mortal life, we knew our families. It's a very foundational um, like doctrine um, in the church. And growing up, that's kind of how I always viewed things. I always viewed kind of, you know, a traditional family. I didn't have any like personal relationships with anyone that was gay, or at least I wasn't aware that was gay. It wasn't until my mission that I actually started like having like, real conversations with people who were from the gay community. Um, I definitely did end up teaching at least a few people who were gay and they had a lot of questions and they had a lot of questions I didn't have answers to. And then years later, I went to BYU and after I graduated from BYU, I had multiple, multiple friends who came out as gay or bisexual. I remember one friend, um, they were showing me their partner or whoever they were dating. And I, w I asked them like, oh, like, are you still going to church? And they said that they were looking for a ward that would kind of accept them, that would feel like, like accepted in the ward. And I felt kind of sad about that. I felt kind of sad that um, that they had to like look for a ward or congregation that would make them feel comfortable or make them feel accepted. You know, within the church, we talk about sin and what is acceptable, what isn't acceptable, what we condone, what we don't condone. And yeah, like um, there definitely seems to be a big sticking point about... Um, like homosexual activity or behavior. The way it's talked about, at least from my experience, is that it's like a serious transgression and serious sin. And that's the thing. I think um, as a membership and as a church, we've come to a point where it's, we say, oh, like, you know, we love people, but we don't love the sin. Which I think, you know, for, the, for a while, I feel like I uh, ascribe to that for sure. But I've learned like for something that's fundamental about a person, like their sexual identity, I don't know if I can view it as so much as a sin anymore because it is part of who they are. Um, sexuality is an essential part of who we are. If I viewed my sexuality as a sin, I know I would never be happy. I wouldn't, and I would, I'd feel so much shame. I do feel privileged that I don't have to experience that. I mean, do I experience uh, shame for, you know, sexual desires and like having sexual thoughts? Sometimes I do. That's something that I, I've had, um, I've had to come in terms with. But at the very least, if I want to go date, you know, a woman, and I want to kiss them and I want to cuddle with them. 
um, for the most part, I don't have any shame. Like, because in my mind, like, God is okay with that. But if, if I was gay and I want that same affection and having, like, shameful feelings every single time, like, I showed physical affection, I'd be a mess. So, sometimes I think, like, what does the church or what do, like, members expect from our gay brothers and sisters? Essentially, we're asking them to repress their sexuality and then not only their sexuality, but, like, any uh, potential to have a partner and share a life with. And I know if I was in that same position, I wouldn't be able to do it. For me, relationships are so important and I do want a family. I do want a partner and I do want children. And if I had to choose between religion or that, my like future family, I would choose my future children. I know that that is more aligned to my values overall. Other things that I wonder is why are members so like scared of the gay community? Why is there this like fear? Um, because that's what I see when people talk about the gay community within the church. It's usually in a fearful and like defensive tone. Gay marriage was legalized in 2015. It's been already years since it's been legalized. I haven't experienced any negative effects due to that. My life is basically the same. My rights and everything have, has been the same since 2015. Um, I do not think there is this like agenda for like the gay community trying to take like religious people's rights or their autonomy. I don't think. I think ultimately they want to just be accepted and they want to be heard. I think, and I think that's a normal thing. I think that's what every minority group um, wants. For me, like the damage that has been done due to like members and the culture and the stigmatization of um, homosexuality in the church or outside the church, it's extremely damaging, like extremely damaging to um, youth that are gay, you know, youth that either inside or outside the church, like, because feeling that you don't belong in a community, that's so much stress. It's so much negative stress in your life. Here are some stats that I found, and um, you can read more about them in the article um, that I'll put in the bio. Gay youth are three times more likely to contemplate suicide um, than just heterosexual um, youth. So gay youth are also five times more likely to attempt suicide than heterosexual youth. And they are 8.4 times more likely to attempt suicide if they come from a family that, you know, rejects and highly rejects like their lifestyle choices or lifestyle choice. These are extremely troubling um, statistics. And I knew before that suicide was higher among um, the gay community, but this is very significant, um, especially for like youth. Um, youth are very impressionable. For me, it's super depressing to even think about these things. And um, and I'm not even part of this. I'm not like I, I'm not part of the gay community. But for me, it is extremely um, sad to read and hear these things. And these are conversations that every member that I know have had or have thought about. And the conclusion that I've always come down to is that I don't want to think of sin anymore. What for me is important is to think about Christ and his life and what he taught and the great two commandments that he taught, right? Thou shalt love thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. And then the second one. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I feel like if we are not fulfilling these two commandments, it doesn't matter what else we do, honestly. It doesn't matter if you're following the word of wisdom, law, chastity, um, you know, tithing or anything. If you're not loving those um, around you, I think it's all in vain um, because all the commandments 
rely upon these two commandments. How do we show love to our gay brothers and sisters? At least for me, how I do it is whenever I, I meet someone who happens to be gay or part of the gay community, um, I just talk to them and I try to get to know them and try to build a relationship with them because because they're people just like everyone else. And I, you know, which sounds obvious, but I think um, in the within the church, we don't, we view them as very different. I think showing love is also accepting that people live different lifestyles than us, you know? And truly trying to exercise unconditional love with those around us. Um, you know, if, if you only show love to those that live and act like you do, that is not part of our doctrine. That's not part of the gospel. And I think another thing is do your best to not to stigmatize, you know, like homosexuality or sexual sin. Um, I think that's it's a whole other topic. If you truly believe that homosexuality is a sin, then it shouldn't make a difference though, because um, Jesus Christ, he, he dined with sinners. And he spent most of the time with those that weren't following the gospel or following the commandments, you know? Um, but you know who he had issues with were the Pharisees, were the Sadducees, were the scribes. And according to themselves, they were, they were the ones that were following all the commandments. They were the ones taking every uh, measurable step on the Sabbath, you know, um, under Jewish law. Those were the people that Jesus had the most issue with the members within the gospel, within the church. It weren't, it wasn't those that were outside. There's so many questions uh, unknown about, you know, what happens, where do, where does the gay community fit in the plan of salvation, everything. And honestly, I don't know. I don't have those answers. I don't know why. I don't know why some people are born gay or not. And that's something that the church does stand by. They, they accept that some people are born gay. All I know is we do have a loving Heavenly Father and we do have a Savior who loves each and one of us no matter what we have done or what we will do and everything will be resolved justly one day and I have hope for that um, and that brings me comfort you know and I hope it brings other people comfort knowing that they will be loved that there's no nothing they can do or whatever choices they make that god will always love them i hope this video was helpful it was just a, kind of my thoughts on the situation and just where i've come to this topic in my life right now um i would love to hear your thoughts and your opinions remember this is supposed to be a positive thing so please um keep it cordial and um i love all of you and i hope you guys have a great day bye